Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of D&D Talks. Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> it's been like a month or two since we've done one of these, um, mostly because we were doing them before we started our Waterdeep campaign, and now we're doing new D&D campaigns. So uh, our Sundays are going to be back with D&D Talks. Generally, uh, we like to do them every two weeks, um, just because it's not not that it's a lot, but just preparing it every um, every week is kind of a lot on top of two campaigns and a bunch of other things as well. So uh, every two weeks, uh, we will be here uh, on Sundays before the start of our Icewind Dale campaign. So the Icewind Dale campaign will start around 3 p.m. Pacific, uh, so like an hour from now. Um, but before that, we like to do a little uh, talking about various topics in DD. So I guess for those who maybe are new, um, we've been doing this for um, in 2020. We did quite a few of these episodes and they are available on my YouTube channel or even on like Spotify or other podcast listening. Uh, I've basically taken an audio format and throw it on a podcast. So it's pretty cool. Um, what we do is myself and George kind of had, uh, we have a discussion surrounding various topics involved with running a campaign. We generally do this in like a Q&A format where myself, who I'm kind of a newer DM, um, I am looking to get kind of more wisdom and gain more knowledge on running a D&D campaign. I'll ask George uh, some questions, uh, and he's obviously been doing DMing and storytelling for a very, very long time, so he has a lot of good insights. And um, yeah, we we uh, I think this is really fun, and we like to also kind of interact with chat. So if you guys have your own questions about this topic, or even sometimes just other questions, we're happy to answer those as well. So uh, that's what D&D Talks is, and today's discussion is going to be Session Zeroes. Um, and a session zero can be defined uh, via like in numerous ways, but the main thing to know is that uh, a session zero is kind of like a mini session that you have the DM and the players have before starting a uh, campaign. And basically, you know, the players and the DM will come together and make sure that everybody is on the same page for their characters, their wishes, goals, scheduling, all of the things that you could possibly want to talk about before starting a campaign you would have in a session zero. And I think that this is a cool topic to talk about because more and more, I think session zeros are becoming the norm for uh, d and campaigns. At, at, there was a time where I think people maybe thought it was optional, but now it's almost like it's a requirement. Uh, and I think that's something we'll talk about a little bit uh, today. Um, and uh, I, I just think that they provide a lot of direction and preparedness for all people involved. So the DM and the players. So let's talk about them and the value that they add to a d, &D campaign. Um, so actually, I guess I could start with the first question for you, George, is do you think that session zeros are a necessity or do you think that they are optional? Like what are, what is, what's your take on that? You know, I, I would say that they're optional, but, uh, like a long time ago, I might've said that, but no, they're, I think they're definitely essential. Um, session zero is all about, um, how to say this right. It's all about knowing your players. The number one tool any DM has in their arsenal, the number one skill that they have to develop is to know their players. If you know your players, you are more likely to make a campaign that they're going to enjoy, and they're more, and you're more likely going to make one that they're going to tell people about and that they're going to actively want to play. Um, and the more likely you're going to have a good time yourself, because if you know your players, you can you can make things catered for them. And that's really important. So I think at in this day and age, session zero is absolutely mandatory. And so what are kind of the key takeaways or topics um, there's obviously a ton of things that we could literally like bullet point each and everything. But if you were to say like, what are some of the biggest takeaways that a person could garner from a session zero? Uh, what would you say are kind of the top ones? Uh, top ones. Hmm. One, uh, 
what are your players expecting? And this is not just a place for you to learn your players, but also a place for your players to kind of know what they're getting into. Let them know what they're going to be expecting in this campaign. So that way they don't get blindsided. Uh, and then the other thing I would say is making sure that you know what lines you're not going to be crossing and have that established with your players. Um, knowing what the subject matters are or what's safe to talk about or what's safe to do. And then finally, uh, the big thing for me is basically kind of creating those characters and making sure that everyone is ready to kind of mesh together. Because it's not just your world and your story. It's a story that you're making with them and a story that they have to be a part of. So you kind of need to know what it is they're after as players and as characters. And then you need to know how to kind of feed into that. So <clears throat> what, what things do you as a DM come prepared with for a session zero? And then on the other hand, what are things that a player should come prepared with for a session zero? Like what are the, like, I guess, start with the DM. What does a DM need? And then what generally should players need for this? You need a summary of what kind of campaign this is going to be, the tone, the style, maybe even some of the central themes, if you want to kind of spell that out for them. Um, you know, if we're running Ravenloft, hey, guys, this is a horror campaign. This is a lot of grim, dark. It's scary. Uh, it's very life or death. Um, there's a lot of evil in it. Let them know that up front. Um, you know, Waterdeep. Hey, guys, this is a story of up and coming heroes in a big city. That gives them an idea of like, oh, OK, so I don't want to make someone who, you know, I don't want to make a, a druid who's been living in the forest and doesn't interact with people. Um, you know, I, I, of course, that doesn't mean you can't do that. But if you do, you know that mm, well, that might be. Yeah, there's going to be yeah. certain pros and cons with it. Um so summary of your campaign and, and the general themes. The other thing I prepare is a kind of survey to find out what things my players like. Um, and then finally, I usually have um, sort of a, a questionnaire that kind of goes with that survey, which is basically questions about their character that they're making. Um, one of my favorite uh, DMs, um, uh, Jerry Holkins from Penny Arcade and Acquisitions Inc. Uh, Omen. He uh, he asks three questions every time he runs the campaign, um, or he did for Ack Inc. anyway, which were: um, What are your secret reasons for joining Ack Inc.? Uh, who is someone you have wronged, and what would you uh, what would you kill to know? Mm. Uh, meaning, you know, what's something that you're willing to kill people for in order to get that knowledge? And that gave him three really juicy hooks. And mm. that's great. Uh, that's exactly what you want. You want to walk away knowing these are my characters. This is the ways I'm going to be able to motivate them and build them into the story. And the players are going to walk away knowing what kind of story they're going into. And they're going to be set up to go into that story pro appropriately. I think the hooks are really good. Um, I think that they add... You're right. They add a very juicy kind of story thing that I, I think makes players also think, like you said, about what kind of character they're playing. Um, and I don't know. It's it's really, really valuable and something I think is really good to have for players um, and DMs before running a campaign is having those those kind of personal questions about yeah. the character. Um, my, Maggie, um, my other... Uh, who I play with, as some of you know, I'll roll for it. She also has GM'd for me a few times, and she does the same thing. She asks, like, sometimes if you're playing in a campaign, a few other good questions that she's come up with is um, if you're playing and your characters already know each other, kind of asking, who do you trust the most? Who do you trust the least? Um, th those kind of questions, it gets you thinking about, like, hmm, well, and even if it's not something you can kind of also improvise on the spot. Maybe this isn't something you thought about for your character, 
but now you have to think about it and you're like, exactly. okay, I'm going to, I'm going to improvise a little bit and come up with something that that's what makes it interesting. And those are questions that when you ask, um, they should definitely, I, I love the Jerry Holkins questions, but those questions should definitely be catered to the campaign you're running. For yeah, instance, if I was running curse of Strahd, I would say, what is your character's greatest fear? Mm. That's very valuable to know. Um, yeah. and that also doesn't have to be, you know, um, you can also make sure that you're getting the right answers. I've done, I, I've, I'm trying to think of how many campaigns I've run so far. I've run a lot of campaigns and there are times when I'll ask those questions and I'll have players who are like, I'm not afraid of anything. <laughs> That's not going to work. Right. Uh, or they'll say, um, <laughs> Uh, like, it will be something like, my backstory is my parents were killed. Uh, my most tragic memory is when my parents were killed. Something I would kill to know is, how did my parents get killed? And it's like, that doesn't do it. That's, those are three of the same thing you just said. You know, we need more than that. We need, and so sometimes, you know, it's okay to say to a player, hey, um, I understand that's really important. You got to give me something more or maybe ask them a, a different question. Say, OK, well, what about this? And at some point, if they start giving you the same answer for like 20 questions, then, you know, they have not thought enough about their character or this character is very, very one dimensional. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not always that's not always bad. But generally, I think if you if a player has made a character like that, then it's probably a bad character. But, you know, some characters like. Batman, for instance, depending on who's writing him, can be kind of one dimensional. Uh, so maybe that's OK. But I mean, even John Wick would answer those questions differently, despite his motivations. Like, yeah. well, my dog died. Well, it was probably my worst memory was probably losing my wife. Uh, what would I kill to know? I would. It would probably be, uh, you know, who, who did this? You know, but like still, it's a little bit different. You know, it's not just one central point. Um, yeah. there's nuance, yep. but yeah, so, um, so to add to that or to, to the second half of that, um, what are some of the other things or just things in general that maybe a player needs to prepare for, for a session zero? Uh, obviously, you know, we've talked about some character questions, but what are some other things you think that a player should have prepared for session zero? Um, players should be, and actually, uh, the legit just said this in chat. Uh, players should be prepared to be flexible. Um, I have a lot of players, and, and, and it's it's hard. this is really hard as a DM, so this is why I encourage all players to be flexible. It's really hard when a player comes to session zero and they're like, all right, I got my character. He's he's a, uh, uh, he's a monk uh, uh, bard who's been living with a tribe of tree folk for several years, and you're like, we're running water deep. Uh, cool. Um, hmm. How am I going to? And it's like you want to say to them, hey, that's not really going to work. Or, hey, could you change it up? And it's it's really hard when they're enthusiastic. It's really hard to say, like, hey, that cool character you want to play. I'm not interested in running him. So mm -hmm. as much as character as players will like kind of latch on i find sometimes players will come up with their first idea and they'll latch on to it right away uh if you start a session zero and one of your players has done that i'm sorry it's going to be really hard to fix or you're probably going to have to be like okay cool yeah i'll make that work um what i prefer is if they have no ideas if they're very flexible adam is actually almost too flexible um because Adam will show up and be like, all right, George, what do you want me to play? Give me my character, my script. Like, not really, but he'll be like, he, he is 100% down to be whatever I want him to be. And I, I feel like it's hard because I'm like, well, I don't want to tell him to be something. But also he's willing to do that. So it's kind of like I'm trying to, well, where do you want to go? Well, I'm willing to do whatever you want. It's, it's kind of like me and him when we come up with a character together. It'll be like... Uh, it's like a couple trying to figure out where they go out to dinner. You know, <laughs> where do you want to go? Well, I don't know, wherever you want to go. It's that for like 20 minutes. But um, that's, you know, that's really great. I would prefer 
if players, you don't have to necessarily show up like Adam does, uh, but I would prefer if players show up and they have maybe three ideas of characters they want to play. And I did this for some campaigns where I'll give them a survey and I'll say, fill out. And this actually I got from Matt Coville. Uh, this was an idea that he uh, brought up in one of his videos. I'll say, come up with three characters and then I'll look at them. And the, when I say characters, it's like race, class and like a one sentence pitch. Like my character is a assassin out for revenge. Cool. That tells me everything I really need to know. Um, a, you know, human assassin out for a revenge. Cool. Um, that way I can look at those and then look at everyone's three suggestions and then pick and choose what's going to make a balanced party, what's going to make a party with interesting dynamics, whether they all mesh together, whether they conflict. Um, and sometimes I have done this with good and bad results. Uh, mm. So it that's always going to be something you learn over time. So if you do this technique and it horribly fails, it's OK. It's your first time. And sometimes you're going to get it wrong. You're going to be like, oh, this will work perfectly. And then someone drops out or someone's not really feeling it. Mm -hmm. It happens That's sometimes, you know. Yeah. You learn over time. Um, so talking about that player survey, um, I, I thought about this. I'm like, this actually may be something we could talk about a little bit more. Um, because I think that you do a really good survey for players um, and you ask questions. Maybe you could talk about it a little bit. Uh, you ask questions beyond just like, hey, what kind of stuff do you like? And and so, so um, some of the questions are, you know, pretty standard, pretty basic. But George also asks questions like, um, how do you certain gives you a, a bunch of genre movie genres uh, or movies? Oh, yeah. And rate I was going to go like into them. that when we oh, talked about right. our our actual campaign, like what we did yeah. for these. You know what? Let's uh, just move on to that because, uh, yeah, we've talked about the player survey a few times, and mm -hmm. so um, we can discuss that a little bit in depth. But let's uh, first talk about um, how we prepared our session zeros for this so campaign, these campaigns in particular. The questions I asked on my survey, uh, I got everyone's uh, I got everyone's name, email, phone number, Discord handle so I could contact them if something ever went wrong. I also recommend, because I didn't think of this my first time, ask for everyone's birthday. That way you know when it's coming up, And because I'm, I'm forgetful. As a DM, I remember those things. As a friend, I don't. As a son, <laughs> my I don't remember my parents' birthdays. I'm a horrible person. Um, but um, I'm just I asked that. <laughs> Next question is uh, what times they're available to play. That's going to make yep. figuring out when to have the sessions a lot easier, uh, though not very easy. Um, um, the then part the next the section I went everybody. into was a section that was game preferences. So I listed a lot of different things. Uh, I listed exploration, survival, romancing NPCs, uh, acquisitions, Inc., just as an idea, crafting, basically every element that I could think of that could or would be in my campaign. Like, and this includes gameplay mechanics or like certain thematic elements i put those all in and then uh basically i had them rate from like one to five like how much do you like these um actually i didn't use one to five i used uh grown meh nice and yas um which pretty much one to five scale but point is is by doing this i can see oh this person really likes romancing so i'm gonna make sure that i have something prep for that this person really likes survival or this person if someone likes crafting you know crafting can be so hit and miss but if they if the player likes crafting and they're telling you that well now you know you can give that person maybe some components and they'll do something with it um you don't have to just hand them a magic item and call it a day um and so that kind of gives me an idea of then okay what i'm gonna put into this and then after that I do a question that's called campaign preference um, and I'll ask them how much they enjoy the following movies or uh, stories and stuff like that. So for Icewind Dale, I listed The Thing, Constantine, Dracula, Indiana Jones, 30 Days of Night, The Grey, Green Inferno, The Descent, Goonies, Fargo, 
Lord of the Rings, Survivor, Castaway, and Game of Thrones. So listing all of those, that gave me a lot of information on like, okay, these people have seen these kind of things. They know those tropes uh, or, and they like them or they don't. Um, and it kind of gives me an idea of what to play with. For example, none of my players have really seen or liked 30 Days of Night. Now, 30 Days of Night uh, uh, as a movie, it was it was OK. But the point is, since most of them haven't seen it, when I do something like 30 Days of Night, it'll all be new to them. So that that actually helps me, even though none of them have seen it. That still gives me an idea of like, well, I can now rip this off and no one will ever know. Um, and things like that. Um, Oh, and then lastly is what alignments do they want to play as? That helps mm. a lot, too, because that gives me an idea of what alignment direction the party's probably going to move in. Mm. And and players, I think it's good if you, you know, receive a questionnaire like that, it's good to answer it as truthfully and thoughtfully as you can, because I know when I, you know, look at that and it's like, do you like crafting? And I'm like, well, I don't hate it, but I don't. And I'm like, you know what? Let me think. Like, honestly, do I want crafting in my campaign or for my character? No. So <laughs> and then I'll answer it. No. So it's good to, you know, not be wishy washy and, and really think about, you know, what kind of things you want in a campaign, because these kinds of surveys really do um, help <laughs> help figure out, uh, you know, what the DM is going to give you. So uh, it's good to to have those kinds of things and, and prepare that as a player and for a DM. So, um, we had a few good questions in the chat. Yeah, let's answer so, those. So, uh, Sidrian asked um, earlier when we were talking about uh, player characters, are you interested in the pitch being who they are at level one or who they are after a couple levels or a few levels? Um, that's a good question. That's a really good question. I think, I mean, honestly, all of the above, but... It really depends. Um, I would prefer it's who they are at level one and maybe an idea of where they're going. So, mm. for instance, uh, I'm a human assassin out for revenge. Well, you know, that pretty much tells you who they are at the start. They're a human assassin and where they're going. They're out for revenge. Um, and, and players can... That, those are things with all of these questionnaires I usually have. And this is something we'll get into more when we talk about prepping for these campaigns in particular. I then have like kind of personal one on ones with those players. And I will say, you know, OK, so like how where's this going? You're an assassin getting revenge. Are you is this a, you know, uh, a story of like if you go out for revenge, dig two graves then that tells me that this person doesn't expect to survive their quest for revenge. Uh, or maybe is this a story of a re uh, assassin who realizes that revenge isn't important? And, you know, ha whether you ask those kind of questions is entirely up to you, because the truth is maybe you don't want to know the answer to that yet. For example, maybe I, you know, maybe that's the question of the story is, does this assassin out for revenge, does he die getting revenge or does he realize that revenge isn't worth it and that his friends matter more? Maybe that's the question of the campaign. Maybe that's the central theme. I prefer to know what my characters are. I don't like it when a player has a most of their backstory, like rather, let me say this this right way. I don't like it when a player has either a most of their story behind them. That's bad because if most of their story is behind them, then it's like, why are we watching this? Right. Or the other one is um, when most of their story is set in stone going forward. Like, I'm, you know, uh, I'm a princess who's been turned into a frog. Okay. Well, you know, or I'm a princess who's been turned into an orc, like Shrek or something, right? Well, that sounds great as an idea for our character, but unfortunately it means that when I make you not an orc, you're going to have to be a princess. And I'm pretty much like forced to then do that. And maybe I'm not ready to go into like a noble storyline. You know, <laughs> um, if things are too erase that solid idea. in any one direction, uh, then yeah. it can get a bit difficult. So, yeah, yeah, that's usually how I like to do it. 
Um, and then uh, a great archon asked, um, how much should a party's alignment be in agreement? Going back to the survey question about uh, choosing party alignment or choosing a character alignment. Um, I usually try to get everybody within one degree of difference, meaning so like if if a majority of the party is chaotic good, I will try to get everyone to be either uh, chaotic neutral, neutral good, true neutral, because that way it kind of steers it in one direction, um, or at least kind of like I I, I kind of guess I go in like it's everything adjacent to whatever alignment the party's leaning in. So like you know maybe the party has someone neutral good, someone chaotic good, and then someone true neutral. Then you know it kind of balances out. Um, and yeah, basically, it needs to just point in one direction. Mm -hmm. If you look at it on the chart and it's pointing in like six directions, that's bad. It means th these players are probably all going to hate each other or there's going to be lots of disagreements. Uh, <laughs> and then at some point, it just spirals out of control. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and then uh, another one other question from Gary K when we were talking about crafting. Uh, how do you incorporate downtime if they want to craft? I know this is a little like side <laughs> thing, but it's it's a. So this is also why those questions on the survey are important, right? Because mm -hmm. how do I incorporate downtime for crafting? Well, I gotta That's a question that. yeah. I'm going to now need to know <laughs> yeah. before the campaign <laughs> starts. The ca if everybody really wants to craft, it's like, okay, yeah. let's figure this out. Um, <laughs> so that's actually one. I, I, I do want to answer your question, but I think that would wait for another another time only because I also have to kind of answer that question for myself still. Uh, Cause we're going to have a lot of downtime happening in uh, D and D Icewind Dale. Um, Icewind Dale. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I think actually probably by next week, that might be a good uh, or the week after that would be a good one to go over. Um, hey, but that's the uh, exact kind of prep you need to do. The Witcher tabletop RPG has a whole section on crafting. Um, which oh, I yeah. totally glossed over. No, and I've but, bought yeah. in tons of uh, <laughs> extra materials from uh, DMs Guild and things like that for crafting uh, and downtime. Uh, downtime is definitely something to that's figure out, but that's all yeah, the more reason right. you need this survey. Because, like... Yeah, you need to know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's go back to just talking about um, our session zero that we ran. So we send out this player survey. Uh, everybody fills it out. And then we meet for the session zero. What what else do we do to kind of prep for these kind of campaigns and in, in, in our session zero? Um, I usually will. So we of course roll stats. Uh, I always do three uh, d six drop the lowest uh, or four d six drop the lowest, um, and then um, I and and that's up to your own personal preference, preference because yeah. some people think that's extremely uh, over, all over the place. I actually like um, what Matt Coville does uh, when he did. He does 46 drop the lowest, but he'll also he'll set like limits like 18 is too high and seven is too low. And so if you roll something like a seven, like that's we're going to have you reroll because that's just a a a bizarre number to get, um, which, you know, all to your personal reference. So we'll do that. Um, We'll also, um, I'll usually have people answer those questions privately, um, like those secret questions, like what's something you would kill to know or questions mm -hmm. specific to the campaign. What's your greatest fear if it's a horror campaign? Um, I will also encourage people to make their characters on Hero Forge. So that way I have an idea of what they look like. Um, not everybody yeah. can draw art, but everybody can go on to Hero Forge and design a figurine. Really easy. Gives you a lot of information. Um, yep. And then, um, and then I'll encourage people to write their backstory, pick out their character traits, bonds, and flaws. Uh, don't skip over your character traits, bonds, and flaws. If your players are skipping over those, then they are not really thinking much about this character. They should be able to answer all of those. Um, and yeah, uh, that's pretty much, I think that's it. Is there anything else I've done that I'm forgetting? 
think uh, so. We just, uh, after we all decide, like, on an idea for a character, then we generally do, like, the more in-depth bar- backstory stuff, like, uh, that this is your life. Yeah. Um, I'll ask is, people if they yeah. know each other or if anyone wants to yeah. be, like, grouped together. That's a good thing to discuss, too, in a session zero. Uh, like, if anybody wants to be related or, you know, best friends or things like that. I think that's cool. Yeah. Um, uh, of course, we will also... What I didn't include in that survey and what I did uh, in person is I said things like, hey, guys, what are those? Someone else brought this up, but what are those? We will not cross this topic kind of thing or what's yeah, lines too and far. Yep. Yeah, lines of veils. And then um, mm-hmm. the other thing that's really important to do in session zero is set expectations. Think of it like your first day of class and the teacher hands out that syllabus. It's that you're basically <laughs> saying, hey. I expect you to be here at this time. I expect things to work like this. The other thing I'll go over is things that are like if there's any homebrew rules um, and also uh, methodologies for resolving certain conflicts. Something I learned in my past campaigns, I uh, I have players uh, like Adam, I think, is very vocal about this. I have players who really don't like PvP. But at the same time, as a DM and as a storyteller, I find PvP happening all the time, and it's hard to avoid. So something I've implemented for this campaign and I told everyone about is if something should happen for any reason that you feel like it's going to become PvP next session or something like that, or even if it's like, let's say it's it's going to happen this session, let me know stop the game and then what i want my players to do now for handling kind of pvp stuff like that is to talk it out between the two players and basically explain why why are we getting into pvp you know well your character did this and my character can't tolerate that so he's going to attack you to stop you or something like that let them talk that out and then talk out what the possibilities are for those outcomes good or bad and now the reason they're all talking this out is so that way when we sit back down at the table and we do PvP, everything that happens is in character because in the players have already hashed it out. They've already, oh, okay, I see why you're doing this. I see why this is happening. And now the players can decide whether they're going to back down or whether one of them's going to die trying. Uh, and they can kind of figure that out. That way it's not like you don't want it to be something where one player feels like oh, I just my character died because you decided to kill me like I'm the butt of the joke. If they are in on it, if you've talked it out, they get to be a part of that story and they get to be a willing participant. Um, mm. That was something I set up for this campaign. Not that I expect PVP to happen much. Um, I think it's actually more likely in Avernus, technically. I think so. Uh, yeah, I think it's yeah. pretty likely little bit um, brother rivalry things like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um we we will see about that but that's why i set that up kind of ground rules um and then yeah any homebrew rules i have yep um what a, do um like what for you as a dm is a good time to have a session zero do you like to have it like a month out or like a week out or i guess it can vary but like what's your personal preference i've actually i've uh I'm the type of person who I'm so excitable that I'm like the week before is session zero. Uh, Thankfully for these campaigns, I didn't do that. Instead, uh, I actually gave uh, actually Tracy was like, no, no, we're going to we're going to start in like a month or so. And so we did session zero. and I'm like, oh, I have a whole month. But actually now I'm very grateful for that because it gave me time to kind of digest everything. And I realized that. I, I needed that extra time to really think through what these characters are, what their themes are going to be, changing my story to kind of encompass that. Um, sometimes my excitement gets the best of me and and it sends me running in like, oh, boy, let's do this. And it's like, no, you, you weren't ready to do this yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, the other thing, I guess, <clears throat> do you... Uh, I, again, I think this varies, but just it's a good thing to throw out there. Um doing actual play so um i know i've had a session zero this i think this is a good tip for maybe new 
groups. Maybe not so much for our group because we've all been playing together for so long. But would you recommend doing like a, a mini session for a session zero before getting into the the full campaign? Just it might be good for new players who don't know the rules. Uh, we Absolutely. did that for like VTM, yeah. for example, when we were all new. Um, but yeah, what are your thoughts on like maybe doing an actual play session? Zero? Yeah, um, I really like doing a kind of. Um like either an intro story. Um, one of my favorite things to try to do, and I haven't done this too often, but is to do something where uh, actually I did this for one particular spot. Um, our campaign, our first campaign we ever ran, um, they were all fleeing their homeland and they were going to end up in another country. Well, between them going to that new country and, and us actually playing that, we had a one shot where it took place in that country. They were all played different characters, but they were playing in that country. And so I was able to kind of introduce them to what in that country, there was like mind flares who magic was forbidden and things like that. So all the players had to use their wits because if they used magic, they would get arrested and eaten by mind flares. So by doing that as a one shot, I was able to prepare everyone for it. They were able to play it, see how brutal it was. And then when their actual characters got there that they're invested in, they were like, oh, shit, this is that place where our, our one shot characters all died. We need to yep. be very careful um, so that I really like doing that. I think that's really cool. Having a session zero one shot that is filled with expendable PCs is mm -hmm. a little bit better. You could even write these characters for them so that like, you know, here's your character. Just hand out sheets. You could do that. So that way they don't have to spend time making two characters, one for the campaign, one for the one shot. Um, but yeah, things like that are definitely a good idea. Uh, cool. Someone at uh, point, um, the, uh, the Woof, the Woof uh, said that uh, he finds giving players more freedom to make up their player backgrounds, uh, the less he can integrate those into a set world. Uh, for instance, your campaign story relies on players who lost their memory. Then you need a player who doesn't remember their past. That's a very great uh, question. Um, uh, specifically, the question is, do you think a DM should dictate player backgrounds to fit their campaign story? To question, some yeah. degree. But that's so you're not dictating it right off the bat. Remember, the first step of session zero is player buy in. You pitch what the campaign's about, what the story is about. And then the players say, yes, I want that, please. Once they've said, yes, I want that. Well, then you can dictate their characters a little bit to fit those terms that they've already agreed to. Uh, for instance, in Avernus, uh, our Avernus campaign started with everyone not having any memory of how they got to Avernus. I thought that yep. was a cool idea for an opening. I saw it in D&D Live when they did Avernus, and I just thought, oh, I really like that. That's a cool way to enter into hell. So one on my survey, I asked everyone what they thought of Amnesia. Uh, funny enough, uh, all my players pretty much were like, I hate amnesia in storylines. Uh, and I had to clarify that. Why do you hate amnesia in storylines? I'm like, I just think it can get really repetitive and overdone if I just keep forgetting things all the time. And I was like, oh, okay. So, but like, if you start the story, not knowing something like that's okay. You just don't want to forget like halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, you know, I kind of prepped them. I said, well, my adverse campaign guys, you guys are all going to be starting. You can write your backstories up until a certain point. Past that point, you will have no idea what happened between point A and point B. So they essentially all gave me backstories. Their backstories went up to a certain point. And then after that point, there's a gap that they don't remember. And I have filled in the details. And so that's how they're able to wake up with amnesia. They know who their characters are, but at the same time, they don't know, you know, how they got here or how why they they're here. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so, absolutely. That's the best way to dictate because you don't want to just dictate yeah. right off the bat because then it's controlling. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, another question um, from uh, Great Archon, actually, who asked in Discord um, a few days ago. Uh, this is something about uh, that we we could probably have a really good discussion on. Um, and I think it applies to uh, some things that have happened in our campaign already. Uh, yeah. If players want to have secrets from other players that might be revealed during the course of campaign, what's a good way to discuss that in session zero without giving away said secrets in advance? Um, 
so my players my players generally know enough not to kind of spill the full bag of beans in the session zero um that's why it also helps if you ask people to give you a one sentence description of the character because that's usually enough to kind of get the info you need without mm -hmm. spilling just here's everything right that's why i will then say uh, another great thing I do for character creation is Xanathar's This Is Your Life. We always do Xanathar's This Is Your Life. I highly recommend it. Um, it's a section in Xanathar's Guide to Everything where players roll and it helps fill in certain backstory details. Because players, even if they come up with a very intricate backstory, there's going to be little things that they just don't think of because it's not their actual life. Xanathar's Guide for Everything's This Is Your Life covers that. So what I'll do is... Everyone will have their character pitch. They'll tell me. And I'll say, all right, guys, uh, let's do Xanathar's This Is Your Life. Uh, everybody, So we're all in a group. I'm going to take people one by one. And then I will go and sit with them alone. Or I'll jump in a separate call. We'll go through This Is Your Life. And then during that, I'm asking them questions. Like, or, or I'm kind of like, oh, okay, so your character is like this. Xanathar's life says this is where you're from or this is where you were born or this is your family and all that. And we're going through it. And uh, when I do the Xanathar's this is your life, I take the results of the roles as a suggestion, not like, yeah. you know, solid fact. Right. And so when we're going through it, it's kind of like a negotiation. I'll be like, does that really think you think that fits your character? No, nah, I think they're they're more like edgy. I'll be like, all right, we'll roll again. And they'll roll a few times. And then we'll kind of be like, oh, well, you know what? I guess maybe this, this or that. And that's when character secrets start to come out. Like, yeah, well, actually, I'm I'm part of this organization. And I've been, you know, I, I didn't want to be. Oh, OK, cool. I'm starting to learn that then. Um, mm -hmm. And that, you know, yeah, gives you a lot of room to make the characters themselves without letting everybody know. Yeah. Um, OK. Uh, so... I think that is there anything else that you want to add? Um, oh, about there was. Yeah, heroes? we had an issue. Uh, well, not issue, but we had a lot of people surprised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in this Icewind a good, Dale. A good note to end on. Yeah. Uh, our episode one of Icewind Dale, uh, the Rime of the Frost Maiden campaign that we're running, um, we had something happen that was a result of a session zero. Um, it was. Uh, Adam's character, <clears throat> who decided to uh, kill a guy, <laughs> like, within the first, like, 15 minutes of the campaign, which, what, from a viewer standpoint, it does seem um, very alarming that a player would just, you know, you introduce an NPC who seems like they have uh, value uh, to the campaign, and, like, that they're going to be a long-running NPC, and then a player decides to kill them. Well, that was actually planned. <laughs> and maybe, yeah. George, you can um, add some insight to what was going on there. Because, again, from a viewer and even the other players, I think none of us knew that that was going to happen. So we were all shocked. Um, the, the, the audience was shocked. But there was clearly something else, something more going on there. It wasn't just somebody, a player deciding to be a murder hobo. <laughs> Without going into too much detail, essentially... With Adam's character, what we ended up doing, um, Adam initially came to me and he was very excited. He was like, yeah, I'm thinking uh, I think I want to play like a uh, uh, a white dragonborn, uh, like celestial warlock or, or something like that. And so I, I did have a small problem where I was thinking to myself, so like a white dragonborn is that's that's very beneficial in Icewind Dale. <laughs> and it feels it's one of those things I part of me wants to say, no, you can't play a white dragonborn. Why? Well, he's going to be resistant to cold. That's a whole mechanic he's going to miss. Uh, it, it also just seems like too perfect, you know. And so part of me was thinking, well, why? Why is he playing this? And there's a bunch of character secrets that go with Icewind Dale. One of them was your character uh, has been. Uh, your character died and was reincarnated. Mm -hmm. And so I pitched to him. I was like, well, hey, what if your character was reincarnated into a white dragonborn? And he was like, oh, yeah, that would be cool. Like, yeah, it was, you know, like this. Um, and 
without going into too much detail about how he was reincarnated or why, um, we both agreed that would be a cool backstory. And then he said to me, he's like, you know what would be cool? Because my warlock character is Warlock of the Celestial. What if the person I was before that was like a ruthless rogue, like a ruthless cutthroat? And so he was like, yeah, when you start the campaign, you could introduce my character and I like slit some guy's throat. And I was like, that's a really cool idea. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> uh, so we had like the human version of him planned and I knew he wanted to kill somebody. Uh, he, he and he, he didn't even care. He's like, I, I, I kill some guy's throat because he stole from me or something. He didn't even have like a plan for why he's killing that person yet. But then he gives me his backstory. His backstory mention some things and uh the other thing i do for my characters always is i will often edit and sometimes add more detail into their backstory and give it back to them and i'll say hey read that over let me know if there's any issues because that way i can kind of fine-tune it a little bit so i fine-tuned it so i ended his backstory with you know he's on this airship and he sees this wizard for reasons i can't tell you since you guys are still watching it uh and for reasons, he wants to kill this guy. So mm -hmm. Adam knew the moment I introduced the wizard and I'm introducing it to all the players like this is going to be an NPC who's very interesting and he's going to be in this campaign for a long time. The whole time I know. No, he's not. He's going to die. But they don't know that. And you, the audience, didn't know that. So Adam got to surprise you all like, yeah, I'm going to come up behind him and uh, slit his throat. And everyone's like, <laughs> what? That's why. It's because he, yeah. he always... And, it, it was great. I loved everyone's reactions. They should be shocked because someone they just met slit another guy they just met's throat. That is surprising. But at the same time, yes, Adam knew. I knew. You can set things like that up. Uh, sing, you can set things like that up as a DM um, with your players. It's great, especially if those things aren't so long lasting, um, which that wasn't. Like, that's the catalyst. Essentially... Adam's entire story got to play out like his backstory. The bulk of it got to play out in front of us. He yeah. killed this wizard. He he fell from the airship. I, I actually almost messed it up. Part of me and him, we were talking about like when he falls from the ship, he he starts praying to like all these gods to not die. And then he hits the ground and dies. Then he comes back. I almost forgot that I skipped over that part. Thankfully, Adam didn't. He was like, as I'm falling, I do this because I had completely forgot to give him the time to do that. But yeah, that's those are great things yeah. to do. It brings everyone else in part of the ride. I think it's cool because, um, you know, you, you the two of you discussed prior. OK, we have an mm -hmm. idea. You know, you want this guy dead, but you don't necessarily know how Adam is going to do it. So uh, I think it's also cool for, you know, the player and the DM to role play out a situation um, and see how it results and, and add that to the canon world um, rather than just saying, yeah, I killed this guy. Um, sometimes, you know, having that added in um, as, you know, an actual role play moment is really cool. And it, it may add things that happen that you didn't, you know, necessarily think about in your head. Um, so we got to watch that play out. Uh, we as players had no idea what was going on, so it was uh, a shock to all of us. But the two of them had an idea, maybe not the full extent. Like, it wasn't a scripted thing necessarily, but it was still like, oh, wow, that, that's really cool how that played out. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I think that those kinds of ideas for Session Zero are very uh, cool and um, great things to discuss and ideas to have for uh, the campaign. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else that we want to talk about or add before we uh, conclude the talk today? Final thoughts mm -hmm. on Session Zero. Session Zeros. Have them. They're yes. good. Yeah. And now there's a whole thing. Is it? Doesn't? Didn't Tasha's the book have like a whole like thing on Session Didn't her book recently have a whole thing on uh, Session Zeros? Yeah. Tasha's had a thing talking about Session Zeros, asking those kind of questions. And yeah. a, a lot of people have talked about them. They, they're they are as good as people make them out to be. I highly recommend them. Um, it takes some work, and it it's a skill doing a session zero just like it is running a campaign. Uh, eventually, you'll get better at them. It, it's hard because with session zero, you only get to do them when you start a campaign, and so you don't really get that much experience at doing them. But the more you do them, 
eventually it's going to go like clockwork and eventually you'll also establish routines with certain players that you play a lot with like okay this is how we're going to go through this this is sometimes i'll hear a player pitch me a character and i'll be like that sounds great but also i know you frank frank if you're watching you're guilty of this i'll <laughs> I'll, I'll know them and i'll be like i know you say you want to play that character but i also know you and i know that you you're gonna you're gonna deviate from that character like part way through i know you don't you do this to me so yeah those that's something you you kind of get a skill for over time yeah, it is cool to see, um, you know, uh, for those watching, um, if you have like a regular group that you play with often, um, it's really cool to to eventually get those habits and, and, and know your players and know your DM and uh, like the little quirks and things that they have, uh, I think is really cool. But this also is really valuable for for new uh, new players and new DMs getting together for the first time. Um so it, it it's uh, it goes both ways. So like for brand new and for long time players, I think session zeros are extremely valuable. Um, so hopefully the stuff that we talked about today, uh, you know, was helpful and gives you some insight. I know I always find these talks very valuable. And um, yeah, thanks, George, for for imparting the wisdom and, and having the discussion. I think it's really good. Yeah. Um, cool, guys. Yeah. So with that, I think uh, we're going to take a quick break um and then in just a few minutes we will be starting up our third episode of icewind dale rhyme of the frost maiden so we'll be having a, a whole uh, campaign going on here as well so uh don't go anywhere and uh if you are interested in these DD talks again i have them all in vod format uh also like on spotify and itunes and all that stuff too if you just want to listen to the audio um which is cool so uh i will share all of that like follow me on twitter or whatever i, I share often so uh, if you want to listen to some of our other dis discussions you can uh otherwise yeah we'll be back here in a couple of weeks to talk about this but for now stay tuned and we will be back uh in a few moments to start icewind dale so see you guys